everyone. My name is Sam Harlow. I am the online learning librarian as well as the kinesiology and public health education librarian for UNCG University Libraries. UNCG Libraries came up with the idea to create a series of webinars for the UNCG community on research and applications, so welcome. In this series, different librarians will cover topics on UNCG Libraries resources and research tools. These 30-minute webinars are recorded in WebEx meetings, where we are now, and placed on the library webpage through YouTube, where they will be closed captions and not have participant data available for the public. So um, here is where they live, and you will also get an email of the recording as well. Um, again, closed captioned on YouTube as soon as we are able. So I'm going to cover some logistical things about how this webinar is going to run. Please mute your audio during the presentation by clicking the audio icon next to your name to turn it red. That just mutes your mic, not the audio of the speakers. But feel free to turn your audio back on by clicking the audio icon again. If I muted you, just um, use the chat to communicate and ask questions throughout the webinar. And you can use the microphone at the end to participate in a conversation. So um, if there are technical issues, you can always call me or email me. I'm about to put that in the chat. Excuse me. <laughs> and, um, and worst case scenario, please remember that this is being recorded. So are there any questions about the logistics before we begin? Today's session is hosted by Linda Kellum, our social sciences data librarian here at UNC Greensboro, and it is on open refining, a free tool for messy data. So, um, Linda, you can take it away. All right. Um, so, uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I will let you know that I'm in a computer that I wasn't expecting to use, so I can't actually actually see the chat. Um, so, Sam's going to um, help me when it comes to chat. So, feel free to ask questions as we go through this. Um, this is a, a brief overview of OpenRefine, um, what it does, where to go to install it, and then getting data into it, and then some basic functions that it can do. Um, but OpenRefine is, is a, a pretty um, complex source. It can do a tool. It can do a lot of different things. So um, maybe in the future, Sam and some others can do an advanced OpenRefine webinar. Um, I think that can build greatly on this. Um, but I use it primarily for cleaning structured tabular data. Um, but like I said, there are many other uses beyond this as well. Um, so let's t talk a little bit about our objectives for today. Um, we'll just do what is OpenRefine, what it does, how to install it, and then getting data into it, and then some of the basic functions that it um, does. So what is OpenRefine? Um, OpenRefine is a powerful open source data cleaning tool. So it helps you clean your data. Um, if you have data from a survey or an Excel spreadsheet or uh, web scraping or any uh, kind, many different kinds of way that you get your data, you can bring it into this tool and it can help you clean it. Um, it's based on what we call an interactive data transformation tool, um, which means that you can interact with the data set through a visual interface rather than having to use a programming language or a statistical software package. Um, it's a point and click interface um, that allows you to go in and see the data in a tabular format and then uh, clean and interact with it. It is built for cleaning and exploring data, and that's really what it does best. Um, and I use it most often for uh, tabular format data, like the table that you see on the side there on the very far right. Um, especially data that has internal inconsistencies. So if you have a data set that needs to be cleaned for some reason, um, you know, is either a, a user input um, problems or if the survey wasn't quite designed um, well uh, or you have some formatting inconsistencies, it really works well for that kind of thing. Um, Importing data into a new format, it all, or exporting data into a new format, it also allows you to export data um, uh, not to a different stats format, so you can't export into R or SPSS or anything like that. But if you have a data set with a, a custom separator, such as pipes, or um, if you have a tab delimited data set and you want to convert it to a comma um, separated value file, then, then that, it will allow you to do that. Um, 
Um, so you can go from a TSV to a CSV. You can um, go from a CSV to a TSV. Uh, so it's very powerful in helping people with that. And it's very easy to use for that kind of thing. Um, it is not good for creating data. This isn't something where you want to go in and actually populate a spreadsheet um, it, or create a data set. Um, those, definitely using Qualtrics or Google Forms or Excel or um, Google Spreadsheets, one of those is if you're um, new to collecting data would make most sense. And then you can then, after you've collected the data, bring your data into OpenRefine to format it, to clean it up, those kinds of things. Um, It is also, I just want to mention, it's not IT, UNCG ITS or University Library supported, um, but there are some librarians who are familiar with the tool in the library, um, and there are some people around campus who might be able to help you with this who use it, uh, but it isn't something that's currently, um, I, as I understand it, IT supported. Um, it is a free tool. It's open source. You can go out and get it um, and download it to your computer um, if you are able to download software to your computer. But it is not something that we, we support here at UNCG officially. You are welcome to ask me questions, um, and I can help you as best as I can, or I can refer you to other people who might know um, as well. And then there are lots and lots of tutorials online. I'll point out a few that are really good for beginners, um, as well as uh, people who are trying to, do more, trying to do more advanced techniques using it. And it is formally, it was formally called Google Refine, so you may have heard of that before. Um, uh, I don't know the story of the transition to the new name, but they um, now it's now called OpenRefine. Are any Sam? Can I ask if anybody's familiar with it? Is anybody who's here familiar with this tool or used it before? Um, Bonnie, I just unmuted you. If you want to talk about your familiarity oh. with OpenRefine. Uh, no, I haven't used it before. Okay, okay. sounds good. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is just go through and talk about why you would use it, and then I'll give you some screenshots. I have it open on my laptop, um, so I can show you it as well. It's just, I wasn't sure if I was, it's not actually on my work computer, it's on my laptop, and so I wasn't sure if I would be able to um, show you it live, but I have a bunch of screenshots that I can show you. Um, so again, it's for cleaning. Um, you can clean tabular formatted data, so if you have an Excel spreadsheet, um, uh, survey data that you've gotten from a Google form and then into a spreadsheet, Google spreadsheet. If you have a Qualtrics download CSV file, um, you can clean that data and it works really, really well for that. And that's what I use it for again. Um, especially data with formatting is issues, this is its strength. Um, many of these things you can do in Excel, um, but it requires, uh, with Excel, it requires that you understand the formulas very well. Um, also, this OpenRefine can manage a lot more data than Excel can manage. So you can see in, in the screenshot that I have on the right, there are 2,300 rows here. Um, you can go, I think it's up to about theoretically a 5 million rows in OpenRefine. It just takes more processing speed to do that. Um, Excel will not do that. <laughs> Excel kind of crashes even after a thousand rows. So it, it it has much more, it's much more powerful than Excel in terms of working with large data. Um, and a lot of the things that you can do in here, you could do with something like R or a programming language, but you have to know the programming language. You would have to, have to know the packages such as tidyverse or other things that will let you clean data. Um, and that requires a lot more um, work to get to that point where you could actually clean the data. Um, than what you would be doing within OpenRefine. So OpenRefine allows you to do things in a point-and-click format that it's a lot easier to do than you would do on your own or in other tools. And I'll show you examples of this in a second. Um, it's also very helpful for getting an overview of a data set, um, especially if you have data that does not have a code book. So if you have um, a survey and for whatever reason you don't have the code book or you have um, some, some web scraping uh, that people have been doing and you don't have the code book, um, you can, this will allow you to get an eyeball, kind of eyeball the data and get a sense of what's going on, um, the structure, um, the um, way it's coded, all of those things. You can just kind of look at it and get a sense of what's happening here. Um, an example that you, what you can see on the right side is a neat example. Um, I'll talk about for just a second. This is a data set of coded data from the Federal Writers Project slave narratives. 
So they took slave the slave narratives from the 1930s, and, and this person coded the data, coded the information that was in the slave narrative to pull out years of, of birth, um, gender, um, education levels, all of those kinds of things that they get out of the slave narrative. Um, and the on the left side of that screenshot, you can see are the years. Those are 1824, 1825, all the years in which the the um, formerly enslaved people were born. Um, so I can look at this, and I'll, I'll show you how you do that in a second, but I can look at this set of years and see that there are 11 cases of people who were born in 1836. It allows me just to get a, a sense of what it, how much of um, what is happening in the data? Are there enough cases within a particular year that I might be interested in to look at? Um, is there, are the years clustered or around a certain period? Um, those kinds of things. So you can ask a lot of interesting questions to help you get an overview um, of the, the data set. Now, this is a clean data set that I got from ICPSR. So I could very easily look at the code book <laughs> um, and find out this same kind of information. Um, but uh, if you wanted to get your own sense or, or you wanted to, or you had a data set that didn't have a code book, this is a way that you could um, kind of uh, look at it and see what's going on. It also allows you to transform data. Um, so if you want to convert values, um, if you want to convert uh, um, dates into a particular format, so if you have a column where the dates are month, day, year, if you want to convert that into year, month, day, which is a more um, a standard format that, you know, in the data world, we, we prefer that approach, then you can do that very easily in, in a batch. Um, it makes it much easier to do that kind of thing. You can also much more easily split data sets or split columns. Um, so if you want to take this data set and split it into its granular parts, or if you have a column where for example, a, one column has both a city and a state in that same column, and you want to split out those columns, um, you can do that very easily within um, OpenRefine. And then you can, and this is the more um, uh, advanced stuff, but you can enhance a data set with other sources. So for example, if you wanted to get ISBNs for book titles, it is possible to do that. I have never done it, but I've read that you can do it. Um, I, you can also retrieve URLs, uh, re retrieve metadata based on URLs. So, um, and I accidentally did that and almost crashed it yesterday. It was great because I had a very large data set that I was trying to do it with. Um, but there's a, some fancier things you can do um, where you can integrate other sources into the data set that you're working with. And then the final one, oh, I forgot to put it on here, but um, you can also do, uh, there is a fetch feature. Um, and a lot of parsing features in here. Um, I can show you tools that will allow you to do that later on. So when it comes to installing, um, openrefine.org is the main place you go, and you can. It requires you fi uh, download a file. Sorry, that should say. Um, but we, after you download the file, uh, it actually operates in a browser. Um, so it's not. It, it's a kind of interesting. Uh, um, software in that sense. I've never seen one that actually does this, but you download the tool to your computer, but then you're actually using it through um, the, a browser. And in my case, if you look to the right here, let me get the pointer. You can see that, oh, this is my Safari browser at the very top. So I'm actually in Safari working with the data. Um, and so it's, it's, a, it's you when you open the tool, it then will open up, or you also need to open up Safari or Chrome or any web browser, and it will open up in that um, with your data. There is a direct install um, on GitHub, and there are also on GitHub some more um, user guides and other kinds of things, um, instructions for people who are wanting to use this source. So getting data into I, uh, to into o open refine is pretty easy. Um, most of what I do is upload files. So you can upload all of these file formats. Um, the most common are obviously being TSV, CSV, Excel, um, but you can also do now Google, uh, Google spreadsheets. Um, they still list Google fusion tables, although I guess that is now um, defunct, but uh, de definitely Google spreadsheets are um, part of that. 
And then you can paste in raw data. So if you do have uh, raw data of some sort that you've gotten, um, you can paste that in. You can scrape from the web. You can orchestrate API calls. And you can, um, and then when it comes to the upper limit, like I said, it's about 5 million rows is the upper limit for uh, pulling into OpenRefine. Um, but there, that does require memory allocation, so it would, would slow down your computer. I did, uh, when I did the URL fetch yesterday, it took a good 15 minutes for it to grab everything. So it, it can, um, if you're doing something major like that, it can slow it down a little bit, depending on the process and um, depending on your computer. So what I'm going to do is go through some of the um, basic functions, but I wanted to pause and see if there's any questions. Donnie, if you had any questions. Actually, yeah. Okay. I unmuted you, Bonnie, so you can just ask the question. Okay. Uh, no, I, I, I'm fine. Okay. Oh, sounds good. Um, okay. So. When it comes to using it, um, I'll just go through the, the basic things here, but here's the place where you go to upload it. So this is the first screen you would see after you open open refine. Um, and the first thing is the create project. So it's based on a project format, which is really nice. I'll show you why in a second. Um, but when you create project, it will allow you, let me get my pointer again. So create project and then from this computer, this is where you can actually go and upload particular kinds of data. And they tell you the formats here that you can bring in. But what I cut off that's over here is if the format is not listed, it actually says that there are extens extensions you can get that would allow for you to bring in other formats. So if there's another format that you um, want to try to bring in, if, especially if you have a proprietary data collection um, format, then you might be able to do it. Uh, you would just maybe need an extension to do that. Um, you can do it by web addresses. So that's where the web scraping comes in. Um, the clipboard is where you can paste raw data. Um, and then there's some other things. And then Google Data, which is the new Google Fusions. I think this is the Google, Google Data Studio. Um, I think that that's what that, but I haven't played around with that one yet. Um, so when up, you create a project, you upload your file, and then it will give you a file similar to Excel if you've ever brought in CSV data into Excel. Um, where it asks you to look at a snapshot to decide whether or not the parsing has worked correctly um, or if you need to fix something. Um, so for example, this is an Excel file. And so it looks at right here, you can see it says parse next one line as column headers. So you can, if you don't have column headers, you could unclick that and then make the first line um, not a column header. Um, there's a lot of different things that so ignore the beginning of the file. You could um, discard rows of data, whatever you needed to do. This is really helpful. I know some, um, if you were using a data file from like the Census Bureau, they do a lot of headers at the beginning of their Excel files. Um, so the first four rows sometimes could just be um, title rows, basically uh, not true data headers, but just um, some extra information like date of creation or the title of the spreadsheet or that kind of thing. Um, and so this would allow you to, to quickly get rid of that um, information that's not quite useful. And it's the same based on all the kinds of files. So if you're working with JSON or if you're working with a CSV file, it will um, allow you to make changes before you bring in the entire data set. Um, this is most important for data sets that are very large, of course. Um, the ones I've worked with here aren't that large um, that you'll see, but uh, uh, but if you are working with a very large data set, you wouldn't want to bring it in without cleaning up this part a little bit. Um, and then once you do that, the nice thing about OpenRefine is that you can keep your projects. So it's not like a temporary file that you can never go back to. You actually get to keep your projects here. And these are all the open projects that I have. Um, some of these are repeats where I was playing around with different things. But, um, but the, these three first ones are the, are the main projects. You can also import projects. So if somebody has an OpenRefine project, they can give it to you um, and you can import the project into your own OpenRefine. Um, so that's the, that is bringing data in. Um, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to say about that. No, good. Um, and then the next thing that's really most people do is faceting data. So faceting it allows you to look at snapshots. And that's what, where I was looking at those years in the slave narrative. 
So if you just wanted to look at a snapshot of a column, so to get a sense of how many people gave um, the year of birth as 1863, um, you can do that. Um, and this is the facets allow you to do different kinds of facets. You can do facet, that's most common, or numeric facet. Those two are the, the most common, and I've not used the others as much. Um, but the numeric and the text facets are very helpful for getting a, just a quick sense of what's going on in your data. And let me show you an example. Again, here's the years. So I went in and did year um, facet, numeric facet, and got the years based on that. And that's, again, that's nice because then you can see like that they're clustered around 1840, you know, or after 1840, um, we start to have more people who are being born and get a sense of what the age of these people were. Um, this is another example where this became very useful. So this was a data set that I created um, for open data portals, of open data portals. And we were using, um, we were typing in states. And so, of course, with user error, there's always going to be a little bit of that. Um, and so it allows you, I can look at this really quickly and see, um, you know, if there were any incorrect states, for example, or if there were um, states that weren't typed incorrectly. Um, also, down at the bottom, you can see the blanks, so I can get a sense of how many blanks, um, how much uh, empty, how many empty cells there are when it comes to states. Um, so this can be really helpful just to get a sense of what's missing, what's happened um, to your data as well. The next one is transforming data. Um, this is where you get into some of the fun stuff, I think. Um, transforming data will allow you to do things like trim. I think I've got a screenshot here. No, I didn't get one. So it allows you to do um, trim white space. So sometimes with data, you'll have a, a, a a blank and then say the actual data. So like if you have states, for instance, you have a blank and then this in, in C and then maybe a blank on the other side. Sometimes data will come in like that. And so it, this will allow you to quickly tr um, trim that what's called white space so you can actually take off the blank space before the, um, before the data starts. Um, if you're splitting columns, especially if you have like names with commas and in blank, sometimes that can happen, or states, cities and states, that can help with that kind of problem. Um, it, with uh, transforming, you can also make all observations in the column uppercase. You can make them lowercase. Um, you can format data a date as data um, or a number as a number. So uh, there's a lot of problems when it comes to Excel and how Excel treats dates, uh, especially as you're going from Excel to other formats. And so this will allow you to, um, to kind of clean up anything that Excel's done that is messed up with you, that is messed with the data so that it's not um, showing dates properly or um, the data is not being stored properly as a date. And then this one's a lot of fun. So this is where you could, the editing columns, this is where you can actually split into several columns. So if you have a column of, again, like a state, city and state in the same column and you want to split that into two, um, which is a very helpful thing to do. Uh, you can split that here, and it's very easy to do it using um, OpenRefine. You can also um, move the columns around if you want to um, do fetch URLs. Fetch URLs is what I was doing the other day. It took a little bit of time to do that. Um, but there's a lot of different things that you can do when it comes to editing your columns. In addition, this is super hard to do. To, it can be super hard to do sometimes, or used to be harder to do in Excel, um, where transposing. So if you want to transpose your columns into rows for some reason, um, if you have a data set that's, that needs to be restructured, you can do that. Or for rows into columns, um, you can do that very easily here, which is very nice. Um, and then, of course, there is a versioning. So this is an example. That's the same open data portal data set. Um, and down here is where I had uh, done something that I didn't want to do. So I went to the undo redo and I was able to go back a step to the, the number five and get um, my data before I had taken that step I did not want to take. <laughs> so there's versioning in it. You can go back, but you can go back in a, a very um, thoughtful way and, and get a sense of what's going on in your data. 
Also, the nice thing about this for uh, data management purposes, you are able to extract any of those projects um, at a different place. Um, so if you do want to um, save your data before you do any transformations on it, you can extract that, um, uh, those parts of it so that you can show where you were in the data uh, transforming process if you need to do that for some reason. And then finally is exporting uh, data. So you can export your project again um, if you want to share your project with someone. Um, you can export uh, export to tab separated, comma separated, HTML, all different kinds of um, formats. Um, and so it doesn't matter what format you brought it in, as, in as you can export it to these other formats. And then there's some additional resources. Um, so I'll just point out uh, this Owen Stevens has got this wonderful um, guide that is. Um, goes into a lot of detail and it's actually really well done um, about open refine and kind of a step-by-step a -step walkthrough of all of the different things it does and bonnie i'll talk about text faceting a little bit more if, if you want to do that um, in addition uh, if data cleaning with open refine for ec ecologists is uh, a tutorial that data carpentry created and you really don't need to be an ecologist to use this what it does is just gives you a, um, it's like a class and you could use this, well, they do a train the trainer format in data carpentry. So they provide a template schedule and you can go through and talk about, um, train other people to use data refine or open refine. Um, but it, it also is something that you can do on your own. Um, and I, I've done a couple of these um, on my own just to learn different tools. And then the for more, uh, Helpful uh, or not more more specific um, information. There are two from pro two tutorials from Programming Historian that are really nice because Programming Historian is written for people who are not necessarily data savvy or programming savvy. Um, so they are, are they these two websites. The cleaning data is more basic, and then fetching parsing data is um, uh, if you are wanting to go out and fetch URLs or, or scrape um, metadata off of it, websites. Yeah. Um, and those are a little bit more advanced uh, skills, um, but, but the programming historian does a great job of writing things for people who are newer to um, learning those skills. So I, I highly recommend those sites or those pages for that. And uh, let's go back. Um, so Bonnie, you were interested in faceting. Could you tell me a little bit more about what you were wanting me to talk about on that? I just don't, um, I, I just don't know what you mean by it. It's, it's okay. Not I'm familiar with in the example of the numeric. Um, from what I was seeing, it's more like frequencies looking at, mm -hmm. and then also looking at the the actual content of the data and seeing if something was mislabeled. Yeah, it is very much like frequency. So looking at it in the code book, you're looking at the frequencies for a particular um, data set. That's really um, what I've used it for primarily. There might, there are some like timeline and scatter plot facets I have not used, and I couldn't tell you exactly what these would do. Um, but the, the for resources I pointed out could probably go into those a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I use it a lot for like, here you can see, um, this is actually, are you seeing my open refine, Sam? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. I mean, I see average, excellent, good prior. Yeah. yeah, so I, yeah. I I would use this just to go in and get a snapshot of, of what the data was looking like. And like you said, very much like frequencies in a code book. So for the text um, setting, it would be the number of times uh, an actual word appears? Yeah, so they are counting it within this particular column. So if you see the drop down arrow is in this column, Q16. Okay. Yeah. And, and they go to facet and then text facet and it will show you the number of times that, so that's what that number is out of the side. So that's for that's for um, values that are written in text. But what about the the actual um, this is, text fastening is going to work on open ended answers as well, or only on something that's got? That's a great question. Um, I've used it to look. So there's an open ended open ended question here. Yeah. Um, I used it to look. So this is an example of an open ended. And I used it just to eyeball what people were answering. 
It's like a word cloud frequency table. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's... very much. Um, I I did have a separate question, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain it. Okay. So um, I do co uh, content analysis with diction software. Oh, okay. Not you're familiar with that. Well, anyway, um, um, if most of the content analysis requires some kind of text file like a .txt, and sometimes mm -hmm. I have a wide column regular Excel file of data set. One of the questions would look like your question, I think it's 18 there, the registration was very confusing. Oh, sorry, sorry. Let me get back to it. Yeah. Um, it's okay. It might, I'm on a Mac, so it sometimes can get a little bit. So anyway, <laughs> what happens is in, in order to transfer the, the data, uh, what I have to do is say I have a thousand rows, right? A thousand mm -hmm. rows. And I, I'm looking at something like question, I don't know, question 43 there. But it, we had quite a bit of technical issue, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got a thousand cells with some text response, uh, some string response there, right? And I need to convert each independent cell from that column into its own dot .text file. Have you ever seen Oh, wow. See what I'm saying? Because what I do is I feed text files. I will feed a, a single text file uh, into a different software that I do the linguistics analysis on. Yeah. So the, the, in Excel, I found some, you know, I have no idea what it is, but I lifted it off the internet, some coding to convert a, a cell contents into text files. I was just curious yeah. if this does anything like that. It may. I, I've never heard of doing that or tried it, but it may do that. Um, it would be something to, there's a lot of user communities around OpenRefine, okay. um, yeah. so it might be something to look and see. And that, you, you know, I shopped the internet for a long time and then finally found some code and I had a, a, my, yeah. my computer guy, so he kind of ran it for me. And it worked, but I have no understanding of it. And, and it was kind of like highly dependent on getting the code right every time I did it. Yeah. So a better, you know, better monkey wrench. <laughs> yeah, no, well, and sometimes that's what you got to do. But um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's worth, it might be worth looking and seeing if some, like some of these customized facets, I don't know if they yeah. would do some of those things, but, um, but yeah, I don't know offhand. I've never. Okay. Encountered that. Um, I uh, yeah. well that's that's fine. Um, the other question I have is sometimes when I get files, they're they're in a form that I don't really recognize um, having used before. But they call it the wide form versus no the long form versus the wide form, and I only use wide form, uh, which means that. Every record is an independent, every, every line of data in the spreadsheet is an independent record. Oh, okay. Form, they could have 25 rows all related to one respondent. And yeah. Rows one to 20. Does this let you convert that? Uh, it might, yeah. The, 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 this is mostly for tabular data rather than relational data. data. Um, By tabular data, you mean what I, what I just described? as the wide format, I guess. But yeah. One one line is a record. Yeah, one line is a record. Um, now, you could probably do some transformations in here um, with that, but I would have to play with it to look and see whether or not you could actually do it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not that common, but I, I had a gigantic data set that I, you know, it was a nightmare, so yeah. I, I figured out somehow. Again, you know, it's touch and go with what I can grab off the internet in terms yeah. of advice. But yeah, it's worth playing around with it. I mean, there in some of the um, tutorials that go into the more complex data sources mm -hmm. might provide some insight on how to do that. But it's not something that I've necessarily had experience. Yeah, because a lot of times I'll have something in SPSS and I'll have to bring it back into Excel to be able to easily recode it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is, this is what's 
that's what this is good for. Like I use this for um, anything that's, uh, especially surveys that are coming from, like this one is our. Well, we I, we just got a survey that uh, I've been trying to clean and the, um, for, well, this happened twice from two different, it's more the practitioner type of industry surveys that we get a hold of. And they, instead of using like one through seven as a scale, they'll use the oddest things like six digit numbers, you know, the last digits are, could be going from two to, two to nine or something like that, no, well, <laughs> two to eight. Yeah. So it's like eight, six, 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 seven, one, eight, six, 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 seven, two, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Okay. Yeah. And, and we have to, so, so basically, you know, it's kind of like replace all. Mm -hmm. Is this, this will handle that as well. Oh, I think. Yeah. 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 The, um, over here, so I can do edit. Yeah. And it was, so if I wanted to, I mean, this is a. Well, sure. no, that's another example. They have a lot of strings. I know for yeah. some reason they have their one through seven. The one and the seven are the string equivalents, and then they do the numeric for two, two through six. So I have no idea why they do this. But, yeah, that's weird. So. But yeah, you can you can edit and you can do a like that was a basic edit where I was just changing the okay. that format. But you can also do other kinds of lots of kinds of edits through this um, source. It's great for that um, yeah. that kind of thing. The the last question I had was about um, trans. I guess you'd call it computing variables, not transforming. Um, I know a lot of times it's convenient to. Um, how do I explain this? Say you had multiple, um, like say you had a variable like in state and out of state, uh -huh. and then you had a variable called transfer or not transfer, and you wanted to create four values. Mm. You would have in state, transfer, in state, you know, freshman, mm -hmm. out-of-state transfer, out-of-state freshman, and you want to compare across those four groups. Normally, you have to write some coding, mm -hmm. say, let let this new variable value one equal, you know, something of the old two. Does yeah. this do any of that, do you know? No, I've, no, I've not seen it. anything in here that would tell me it could do that. I know what you're talking about. Um, um, yeah. I, but I don't know anything in here that would do that. Mostly it's for existing data. You can split the data that exists that's already there. Yeah, I've never seen I'll have to think about that. I'll, yeah. I guess it's just a question of looking and seeing what people are doing with it. But this was helpful. Yeah, yeah. Well, there are a lot of, there are those extensions that people have used with it. And I don't know if those extend into data analysis kind of um, or data. Um, yeah, um, variable. Variable create. creation. Yeah, that kind of thing. It, it would be a natural next step, I would think. Mm -hmm. But so most of the, most of the people are just using this instead of dealing with more simple functionality of Excel. I mean, is that what they're saying? Yeah. Well, that in R. So, like, if you are, use R and you want to clean a data set like this, you would have to know the functions, right, or the package to be able to do that. And so, this is something you can do. This similar kinds of thing that you could do in R. But for larger data sets than you can do in Excel, there's also the um, a lot of people are using it for the scraping aspect, so web scraping. If you wanted to, um, how is that working? So again, that's something that I don't do. Um, again, um, but the or I haven't done. Um, but we, I think our um, data visualization person has done it. Um, so she might be doing a webinar on that later on. Cool. Yeah, I just used a scraped data set. Well, now it, the paper's been out for over a year in, in mm -hmm. journal, but it, it was an Airbnb scraped data set. Yeah, 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 yeah. You may have seen that inside Airbnb. And uh, yeah, I had to do, you know, some. Oh, I, actually, I had over 9,000 records in, from the scraped data set that I had to not only clean, but convert into those text files and run the content analysis on. So it was oh, wow. amusing, not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, because uh, my computer kept blowing up. I mean, yeah. I think I would have used more, but I think 9,000 was the most my computer would handle. So I was like oh, wow. under Excel, I guess. It was weird. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Well, yeah, definitely take it, check out those other um, tutorials. and. Uh, Will you be sending to them? Uh, I'm trying to figure out the best way to get the all these links off. Were they in the... Yeah, the the PowerPoint. I, yeah, I Sam sent the slides in the chat, um, so you can just grab those. Or um, I'm also going to include the slides and the email with the recording. Okay, perfect. So, so um, this is done, you know, <laughs> with everything else. How do I actually? Is there a way of copying the chat? Um, so I think what I usually do is I'll send you a link to the streaming version in WebEx, which actually has the chat in it. Um, okay. You know, like it's like embedded in the video. Um, okay. You are welcome to copy and paste this whole chat right now into whatever yeah, you want. Um, and as like I said, I'll try to include Linda's slides um, in the email where I put the recording. Um, as okay. Oh, I sense? see. Yeah, let me highlight it. I guess I'm able to copy it. I'll just email it to myself. <laughs> and just as you're like copying and pasting, uh, just to let you know, we do have one more. Webinar and this uh, of research and application coming up in um, late March on researching with digital archives by David Wynn and Kathleen Smith from our archives. Um, we do also have another one coming up for online learning and innovation, another um, UNCG Libraries webinar series. Um, we have one today on UBL, and uh, we have one um, in April by me on um, library online tutorials and research. Cool. Um, I will, uh, that is also still available for sign up. So okay, I'll, you, I'll, sorry, go ahead. I'll look into this. Okay, great. So um, if there's no other questions, Linda, do you have any final comments? Nope, I don't, I'm good. Thank you very much for all your questions. Sorry, I couldn't answer all of them. No, no, I, you know, it's always a start. I mean, it's a never-ending never story. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the well, fun of it. <laughs> well, thank you for your time today. I, I it's, you know, well worth it on my side. Okay, yeah, great. Thank you Sounds for great. Coming. Spread the word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely do that. I think if more people knew about this, it would be very helpful for a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, okay. take care. Have a great sunny day. I think it's still sunny, yeah. Still sunny out. That's great. Okay. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.